Good evening, this is Mrs. Pedrosa, Director of Curriculum, and joined with me this evening is Mr. Rauscher, our Technology Supervisor. This evening we'll be presenting a brief overview of live instruction in the Manchester Township School District for the 2020-2021 school year. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to present uh, to, to meeting tonight. I would like to discuss some things that are uh, some technology that's being used in our classroom, uh, some technology that we're leveraging uh, that had been previously existed in the classroom, some technology that we purchased this year. Uh, the first item uh, is the Epson projector. So each classroom is outfitted with an Epson projector uh, that basically allows the teacher to project from their desktop uh, to the wall. This allows the uh, students in classroom to be able to see an enlarged image or video of what the, uh, the teacher is displaying to the class. Also, each teacher is outfitted with a, with a Windows PC desktop. So they have the ability to connect a Zoom meeting to on that desktop, connect a microphone in, and allows basically the projector to be able to uh, be connected to that PC so then they can display that image. Each teacher also is given a Chromebook. It's a Lenovo new Chromebook that we just purchased this summer. It's a, a flip Chromebook. It actually acts like a tablet. So it has the ability to act like a Chromebook or a tablet, but also has the ability to uh, be annotated and be able to write on like a whiteboard. So there's a stylus that goes with it. It allows the teacher to flip up into annotation mode and it basically can write on like they're writing on a whiteboard or using it as a digital presenter. Uh, it allows both people at home and who students who are in class to see the same thing across the Epson projector. And lastly, we purchased teacher lapel microphones. These are wireless microphones. We felt it was important for teachers to be able to be at front and center of the room. We wanted also to, it was important for students who are at home to hear the communication and the, uh, the lesson from the teacher uh, and basically hear no background noise. We felt for security reasons, we didn't want students who are at in classroom to be able to then communicate with students at home. We also didn't want the students at home to be able to hear background noise, such as you know, heating and, and cooling ventilation. We didn't want you know, any kind of alarms that are going off or anything like that. Uh, that's, that's heard in the background to be heard by students who are at home. We felt that was very important for the equitable of access to be able to have those students at home only hear the instructor and what's actually being taught on the lesson. So the hybrid learning environment, what will the students in the classroom see and what will the students learning remotely see? Students in the classroom will have a Chromebook and they may have the following tabs open, Google Classroom, Digital Programs, and the students will receive instruction in person. Students learning remotely, these students will have a Chromebook with the following tabs open, a Zoom session, Google Classroom, and perhaps some of the digital programs that the teachers are using, such as Big Ideas or Study Sync. The delivery will include students hearing the teacher and seeing the tabs that are being shared. They'll see the teacher in front of the classroom, and then they can also see the teacher through the Zoom session. Essentially, the students in the virtual setting will have the same class experience as the students that are in the classroom having in-person instruction. All right, so part one, creating a synchronous learning environment. Uh, we felt it was important for our teachers at all levels of use of technology to be able to use these, do these lessons, to be able to use a synchronous learning uh, environment. We felt it was very important that, you know, somebody who basically does not really know how to utilize technology to be able to participate and in, in do lessons in this environment. Uh, so with that, we, we've, Kind of prepared what what is use uh what's going to be needed for uh, the teacher to be able to get on so the first thing would be to prepare the technology for use so that's going to include turning the desktops on turning the projectors on unplugging the microphone from being charged connecting the microphone turning it on and then uh, obviously like turning your digital presenters on logging into all those devices the next thing would then to be prepare like your Zoom session. So you're gonna schedule your Zoom meeting for the day. So whatever time it's gonna be. So whether they're clicking on the Zoom session then they're scheduling it for tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, or whatever time may be for the class. Uh, then they're, they're basically gonna invite their students to that. So whether they're gonna do with that is basically just gonna copy that link that the Zoom session creates and then put it in their Google Classroom. Uh, basically that just allows the students to go in and be able to join their uh, their Zoom session right from the Google Classroom. They don't have to individually create sessions for each one of their, their students. It's just a one click, one copy and paste, and then the students have access to, you know, uh, to access that Zoom session. And then lastly, they're gonna start the session when the time comes. So the next part is teaching in your synchronous learning environment is presenting your screen. The teacher will have the ability to present the screen, annotate with a whiteboard, and students will be able to engage both the students in the classroom 
and the students that are following along from home. For the students' experience at home, uh, we felt it was very important that they get the, uh, the same experience, as we said before, as the students who are in class. So what they're going to do is join the classroom using their Google Classroom code that the teacher gives them from their Zoom session. Uh, they're going to then uh, join the meeting. And then basically the teacher will instruct them if they're using the microphone or they're using the camera uh, to turn those on or turn them off and just to follow instructions, just like they would in the classroom. You know, whatever they're, you know, instead of maybe they're pulling out their English book, now they're opening up a Chrome Chrome tab and going to a Google Doc. Uh, so it's just all let off instruction by the teacher. And I, you know, I think just some accustomed to getting used to things like this and thinking a little different, it's gonna, it's gonna change the culture with technology. We have some examples of what it looks like from a teacher and student's perspective. So uh, this is a what it looks like from a teacher at home, or I'm sorry, or a student at home. So we have a lesson being taught here. Uh, if you notice to the right corner of the screen, uh, this is a Zoom session set up with uh, a teacher and she has a camera on, it's her digital presenter. So it's their document camera. It's being fl it's flipped and being used like a webcam. Uh, to the right, you'll see also too, all the students who are joined, all their camera and microphones are off. Uh, the teacher is, if you notice, has two sessions. Uh, one is here and one's in the, in the bottom. The bottom one is the Chromebook. She's logged into both sessions. So it basically allows her to annotate, allows her to write on her Chromebook like a whiteboard. And so she has control over both locations. Uh, she's presenting right now a web resource. So students in class and students at home are seeing this on their screens. Or actually, the students said in class are actually seeing this uh, just on the whiteboard. And the students at home are actually seeing this on their entire Chromebook screen. Uh, and this is what it's going to look like for the students who are in class. Uh, so that's that's kind of what a display is like. So there's the whiteboard, there's the microphone the teacher's wearing. She's writing on the Chromebook, um, and then uh, you know it, it's being presented digitally through the use of the Chromebook and PC. Additional instructional experiences could include pre-recorded videos, small group one-on-one -on -one live instruction through Zoom, and then assignments that are posted through Google Classroom. We have some example of those pre-recorded lessons here. So if you notice, we have a s'more uh, based off of uh, one of the lessons that was done prior to this year. So here's a, a unit lesson. Here's a recorded video. Uh, so basically, it's like a flipped classroom. So the teacher kind of gives gives a uh, you know an, an outline of what they need to do for the lesson, uh, and then basically it outlines what needs to be done on each one of these videos with an objective. Uh, so then it allows the students to go back in and. Uh, it allows them basically to use it in a flipped classroom environment. You know, maybe they need to go on some small group after they've, they've watched that video. Uh, if there's any explicit teaching with specific skills or strategies, or, or they're doing maybe a conference just with that student on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, doing those pre-recorded videos will allow them to do that. This actual slide is a live session that was hosted by one of our principals, um, Mrs. Waldron, the principal of Manchester Township Elementary School. And after the students were involved in a summer program that was mostly done through remote instruction, she had what was called a beach party. And so the students were invited, joined her in a session, and the children were able to share with her their experiences, what they thought about the um, program. And then actually they were able to um, speak one-on-one -on -one with their, their peers as well. And so this is a photo of the children actually in that particular session. The next slide is a testimonial, um, which are testimonials offered by parents uh, regarding the live instruction. And you can see that parents' feedback was very, very positive. They felt the live sessions and the interaction left the child with a smile on their face. They looked forward to joining the meetings. They were excited to share material. Additionally, um, they felt the format was very easy, um, interactive, the length was very good, and that um, it reinforced concepts as needed for children. Additionally, um, they actually highlighted and, and thanked one teacher in particular for going above and beyond and creating this very interactive Google Classroom for the child and providing live virtual learning. So at this time, Mr. Rauscher and I are available to take any questions that you may have regarding live instruction.